So, have you seen this fine gent before? You're probably asking, what is this? Some sort of egg with legs, maybe? Wait, play it one more time for me. <laughs> uh, but this is indeed a real animal. Brevikeps namaquensis, a species who fall under a category of obscure animals called rain frogs. Rain frogs, even by frog standards, are pretty strange. You know all of those things frogs are supposed to do? Hop, croak, live in water, that kind of thing? Well, the rain frog doesn't do that. A lot of their odd traits are explained away by how it lives. Unlike a regular frog's dependence on bodies of water, rain frogs instead spend all of their time on the dry land of southern and eastern Africa. In fact, if you do place them in water, they would be unable to swim and drown. They are located in areas of land where water can still be sucked up by their little bodies. For instance, Brevikeps macrops, the desert rain frog, lives in an area of sandy coast only 10 kilometers thick. Although at first glance too dry for a frog, this thin stretch of coastlines experiences plenty of humid fog from the Atlantic Ocean, humidity which the frog soaks up using a special patch of skin on its belly. Because they don't have to rely on bodies of water, rain frogs are free to do as they please, which admittedly isn't much. Like I said, because of their anatomy they have lost the ability to hop, or climb like other frogs. Instead, they waddle around the soil at incredible speeds. Being nocturnal creatures, they only come out at night, and wander the terrain searching for prey. These prey items, as for other frogs, consists of small invertebrates. Somehow these animals are capable of ambushing their prey, and quickly lap them up using their tongues. During a special time of year, however, this hunting is not necessary. When the sparse rains finally fall, various insects like termite swarmers are drawn out to the surface world. This bug buffet attracts the rain frogs who will come out of their burrows in this special occasion and feast. That magnificent stride, by the way, is because of their feet. Their inward-facing limbs are spade-like and surprisingly powerful. They come in handy when used in another key aspect of their lifestyle, digging. Rain frogs are all adept burrowers, digging small burrows both to escape predation and absorb more water from moist soil. Their adaptation to land also extends to their young. Unlike other frogs who lay their eggs in stagnant bodies of water, which will eventually give rise to tadpoles, rain frogs lay their eggs in small burrows. Instead of tadpoles, what pops out are something called froglets, which are basically just miniature rain frogs, who, just like their parents, are immediately ready to waddle around and dig. So that explains some parts of the rain frog, but one question still goes unanswered. Why does it look like that? At first glance, the round body really just seems to be a hindrance and is even further emphasized by the unusually small head. But trust me, there is a reason for these traits as well. The round body, besides the frog's camouflage, is its primary form of defense. It's able to puff itself out to make it look bigger and more intimidating, which is always pretty helpful when by default you are very small. Just to give some perspective, Brevikeps gabosus, or the giant rain frog, the largest of all rain frogs, grows a mighty 4.5 centimeters in length. To further threaten any enemies, the frogs will stand as tall as possible and emit a hearty war cry, which is what that one in the video is also doing. Their body type also is useful for the event of a predator attacking their burrow. Once more, the frog puffs itself up in its hole, making it difficult for any attacker to dislodge it. As for its tiny head, hon honestly guys, I'm coming up short. Like, I can't really see a great reason for obtaining a preposterously tiny head in this situation. I guess it might be good for burrowing, as other burrowing frogs have proportionally small heads, but my personal head cannon is it's just to look even funnier and avoid predation through pure comedic output. But whatever, maybe I'm wrong. It'll just be another mystery of nature. Speaking of the mystery of nature, let's talk about mating. Once more, another grand obstacle for the rain frog's body plan is how they are able to mate. Frogs mate via amplexus, where the male hangs onto the back of the female, fertilizing the eggs as the female releases them. But the rain frog isn't able to do that, not just because of body shape, but females are also much larger than males. For the males, it would be like climbing and sticking to a smooth boulder, and they would just awkwardly slide off. How do they get around this? Simple. Frog glue. During mating time, males will secrete this adhesive substance from their skin that allows them to stick to the back of the females and perform amplexus. Hey, just editing this video and I realize there's a species of rain frog with the scientific name Brevikeps baginzi and the common name Bilbo's rain frog. You know, like the hobbit. 
I, I didn't know where to stick this incredible fact, so it's going here. The rain frog is a curious creature who at first may seem completely and utterly helpless. Instead, it is as well designed for its environment and lifestyle as any other animal. Although rather unorthodox compared to other frogs, and incapable of many of the things associated with them, they have found their own unique path as land-dwelling, burrowing animals. Maybe they look silly, but rain frogs have dug their own niche, both literally and figuratively. Well, here's this month's video. I know, very short, but there is surprisingly little about these guys. Just goes to show that they have to be further studied. But don't worry about the length of the next video. It's another one of my big projects that I think you'll all enjoy. Anyways, thanks especially to the videos as well as music and images I used to make this. Oh, and another thing. Thank you for watching, and see ya.